Hello, you're watching Avenue X, where junkie and good storytelling shares their thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Huo Shi Jingying, The Lord of Losers, is a 24-episode web drama that's been aired on the platform iQiyi. The drama is directed by Wei Zheng, written by Wei Zheng and Zhou Jie. This director, writer, and the main creative team of this drama is the same team. That has done one of the most well-known Chinese sitcom series in the past called *I Apartment*. *Ai Qing Gong Yu*. That drama made this actor, this actor, this actor, this actor famous. And if you've watched *I Apartment* previously, there are no shortage of intertextuality in *The Lord of Losers*. But it doesn't matter if you haven't watched the other sitcom series many years ago because story-wise, they're not connected in any sense. The drama is led by Li Jiahang plus many other actors I haven't heard before. I'm actually very happy with their performance, so I'm gonna just read out their name: Zhang Yiduo, Cheng Guo, Tu Hua, Liu Zhongqiu, Li Wenfan, Sun Yiwen. As it is a sitcom, these people. Are the repeated characters who show up all the time, and it pretty much takes a different theme and topic of each episode. You can really look at it as a unit drama. The drama has 24 episodes. I've watched 10. It has aired 16, I think, at this point. I'm not 100% caught up with it, and because it's a sitcom, it's not the type of beginning, middle, ending type of story structure. I don't think I'm gonna change my opinion on this drama much, even if I watch all 24 episodes. That's why I decided to talk about it now. I'll give this drama a 1.5 gold mine. I don't think it's at two gold mine yet. If it's even better, second half that could happen. If not, it still doesn't change the fact that this drama deserves more attention than it does. Honestly, sitcom as a genre is almost completely dead right now in Chinese drama land. So because of that, I think it does deserve a little bit more encouragement. It talks about this big company, corporate company that kind of does everything. No specific. Explanation, which makes the drama fun because you can do anything with it. That has a newly founded department called Po Shui Bu, messy business department, and they promoted a guy who's worked here as a screw in the big machine for over ten years and never got a promotion. Played by Li Jiahang to lead this department, but pretty much it's a department that if there's gonna be a big layoff, they're gonna be cut off first, and they take the crappy things that come from every other department. They are located. At a basement place that is super dilapidated, covered with graffiti, and they're the outcast. The exiled members of this company all collect at this office. So think about all kinds of office setting, like IT crowd, that type of sitcom. It's a very similar situation. Our main lead comes in, and he meets his new team, made up with this programmer lady who refuses over time and super cool, and can use her. Magical computer power to get everything done for herself. A designer who only likes square things and hated circular things. A copywriter who is super emotional, sensitive, who can totally talk himself into depression. A intern lady who wants to achieve great things but has no idea about what goes on in this big company. A secretary who's being super objectified by all the men in her life because of how pretty she is, and then speaks with a strong dialect. A salesman who believes that he is the secret illegitimate son of this big company's boss. Yeah, that's a very useful and colorful team. So he leads this team, and then every episode is something ridiculous that happens in, at this company. Now let me talk about what's great about this drama. Number one, it's one and only. Of its type, holding up the flag and saying we are not completely dead yet. Number two, this drama actually had a lot of creativity worked into it. You can feel the main storytellers really want to do their best with what they're given. So in this drama, you'll see just only one sequence. I think through the whole thing, suddenly people get into musical mode and start singing. <laughs> It's very rare in Chinese drama land for that to happen, and to Happen where it doesn't embarrass you. They also make every episode's ending song a commentary on the episode that has just aired in all kinds of inventive ways. So it's all different for every episode. There's tap dancing. There's music played by chopsticks hitting on bowls and dishes. There's Girl band dancing and different versions <laughs> of the same girl band dancing at different episodes. I haven't seen this being done. By any other dramas, and honestly, it probably can only happen to a sitcom. It does mean that you have to put more planning, more effort, more money to make the different ending songs for each episode. It's rare to see people actually 
don't exit the drama until the last second. I'm very appreciative of that. Third thing is, I really do enjoy Li Jiahang's performance. I feel like ever since he was um, sort of typecasted as a comedy actor of that particular character in Eye Apartment, he hasn't been able to gotten out of it yet. And this role he plays, I really cannot imagine anyone else play it. And in a way, him playing this character, being locked on this position for 10 years in the company, is very reflective of the actor himself. And in this drama, he comes back as a comedy actor, facing the fact that, okay, so I have been decided that I am like this. Let's see what I can do. There's this weird sense of drama reflecting back to reality reflecting back to drama, if you know a little bit about this actor's previous work portfolio, perfect choice for his drama. And if it wasn't him, it wouldn't be the same drama. But then the other actors supporting roles, the other people in this office also are pretty good. They're not that famous. I don't know any of them previously. This time I've noticed this lady, Chen Guo. She plays the programmer. Wow, she actually has great range. If you've watched this drama up to episode 5, you're gonna see what I mean. But she really can play all kinds of different roles and very well. So I have discovered another treasure. I hope in the future she gets more roles and more opportunities on screen. I forgot to mention in my previous point about creativity, this drama also gives you two episodes, episode 5 and 24, where the audiences can choose where the story goes. So it has multiple branches different endings, possibilities, and different ways of working through the whole storyline. You can pick at different points what the character will decide to do, and that will lead to different development and ending of the story. Episode 5, I spent a couple of hours playing through all of its options. It's pretty fun. I guess if you're not watching it on ITE with its functions, it wouldn't be able to happen for you in that way. Last thing is, because it's looking at right now, 2022, contemporary life, big metropolis life, wage earners life, working not 9 to 5, but 9 to 9, 24 7, overtime all the time, feeling you're just trapped in hamster wheel, going on all the time, every day is the same day, and yet there are so many things <laughs> that makes you agitated, makes you worry, makes you feel life just doesn't have any hope, and um, all the shit that's going on in our contemporary life, this drama is just a super in time and satirical comment on everything <laughs> that is relatable to people who are living this kind of life. Not saying the whole world is living that kind of life, but for a large number of workforce age people in China who live in, let's say like cities. So this is a very in-time comment on everything. Like I said, the one and only. Not just because it's the one and only office sitcom right now in China, it's also looking at these things, that's one and only. In certain dramatic storytelling, you also see certain aspects of this kind of contemporary life gets reflected, but not at this intensity. Not that every episode you have a major theme and you just go at it <laughs> full speed. That is only allowed by the nature of sitcom. Now let's talk about what's not ideal about this drama. Number one is it's not very friendly to international audiences. Any kind of sitcom in any kind of language is very situated in its language, in its culture, in the time. So all the intertextuality, or the related to language pun pronunciation dialect is heavier in this drama than other Chinese dramas. <laughs> if you're an international audience, the fact is it may be very hard for you to get a lot of the jokes unless you are very advanced in Chinese language. Also, what is going on in China right now? You know, for people who learned English and learned English well, a lot of them did watch Friends or Big Bang Theory. The second thing is, as a comedy, okay, if we just look at it as comedy, and regardless of it's the only one that we have now in Chinese dramaland, pathetic. It's not the best comedy out there. Situational comedy, um, office comedy? There are better ones out there globally. We all know what they are, okay? That couple of ones that are really good. This one still is lacking in just comedy writing itself. It still has fillers, it still has points where it's very forced. Heavily relies on specific actor's ability, their expression, holding that awkward pause, and then forcing the atmosphere to feel funny. But the thing itself is not that funny. Still happens quite a lot in this drama. So as a comedy, on its own, it's not the ace comedy, the best comedy that every three seconds you laugh type of comedy, but 
Unless later people found out it has plagiarized something else. So far hasn't, I don't think. Uh, if it's fully original creation, in today's Chinese drama land, pathetic situation, uh, everything considered, it's already something that deserves a... Um, though, if you are a very high standard comedy watcher, this is not gonna be the best one, okay? <laughs> of its genre, compared to everything else you can find in this world. So that's definitely still on the negative end. At the end of this video, first impression, but I won't make another video on this probably. From Avenue X, I would just say this is a very unique drama because sitcom is just not in Chinese drama land right now. For particular audiences who are either very interested in this genre of thing and you want to see what Chinese drama land can do, or you have other purposes, sitcom that tends to have a higher requirement for the audience to understand the language, uh, whether it can do certain things outside of the drama itself for me. Um, for these audiences, this probably is a very interesting choice and probably only choice you have. And then for other international audiences, not so interested in it, you can skip this drama. You're not gonna miss the greatest thing in this world, basically, but it's a unique one. So that's why I wanna make a video for people out there who actually may make use of this drama, but wouldn't really have heard of it. <laughs> if nobody makes a video on it, well, I make this video. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching and may your life be rid of all the pressure in this world.